The Nakba is commemorated on May 15th of every year, and it refers to the near total destruction of Palestinian society at the hands of Zionist militias upon the establishment of Israel. But the Nakba is not a tragic relic from the past, rather it is a planned, organized, and most importantly an ongoing process of ethnic cleansing. It's argued that the Nakba officially started with the issuing of the 1917 Balfour Declaration, through which the British government committed to the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, as if Palestine was the property of the Brits in the first place. Then, in 1920, the British colonization of Palestine began. With it came a brutal crackdown on any anti-colonial organizing or national sentiment. With the help of the Brits, the Jewish population in Palestine increased from 9% to almost 27%. And after 27 years of colonial rule, the British government announced it would be handing over Palestine to the United Nations. The UN, in turn, recommended dividing Palestine into Jewish and Arab states in 1947, allocating 55% of Palestine to the Jews, including cities with Palestinian majorities and important coastlines. Naturally, Palestinians rejected this ridiculous plan, as the proposed Arab state would mean they'd lose key agricultural lands and seaports, not to mention their homeland. Shortly after this, the fighting broke out between Palestinians and Zionist armed groups, who had gained training and arms from fighting with Britain in World War II. The Zionist forces waged a brutal campaign of ethnic cleansing. Over 750,000 Palestinians were forcibly expelled from their lands and rendered refugees outside of the borders of their own homeland. The Zionist forces had seized over 78% of historic Palestine, destroying and depopulating 530 villages and cities and committing over 70 massacres. The British officially ended their rule in Palestine on May 14, 1948, and left their artillery and tanks for the new Zionist regime to use. Since then, the Nakba became firmly established as a systemic practice that continues to be implemented by the Israeli state to this day. But to understand the Nakba, one must understand Zionism, the political ideology born in 19th century Europe that argued that the creation of a Jewish state would be the only viable solution for the persecution of Jews around the world. But that salvation within itself necessitated the ethnic cleansing, the expulsion of an entire population. And the Palestinians, who have lived under Zionist rule for the past 75 years, define it as such, an ideology of dispossession, an expansionist and racist settler colonial enterprise. And on multiple occasions, the early leaders and pioneers of the Zionist movement did not shy away from this framing. But Zionism is best defined by its material manifestations, and the Nakba is the clearest crystallization of the Zionist ideology. And the Nakba is far from over. The Zionist movement did not stop eating away at Palestinian land in 1948. In fact, in 67, the Israeli regime occupied the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and the eastern part of Jerusalem, forcibly expelling 430,000 Palestinians, half of which had already originally been dispossessed from their homes in 1948. Today, millions of Palestinians continue to live in fear of home demolitions and arbitrary arrests. Their towns are encircled by Jewish-only colonies and military outposts. Millions of Palestinians live without access to basic rights, be it in the West Bank where they are immobilized by the apartheid wall or in the open-air prison that is the BC's Gaza Strip. As for Palestinians that hold Israeli citizenship, they live under the rule of a regime with dozens and dozens of laws that discriminate against them as non-Jews. There's even a law that prohibits commemorating the Nakba. Today, there are nearly 6 million Palestinian refugees around the world. And with the mass force expulsions of Palestinians in places like the Naqab, Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, Hebron, and elsewhere, the number of internally displaced persons increases every year. At a certain point in every Palestinian's life, we recognize that the Nakba is far from over. If you're not expelled from your home, it's demolished. If you're not imprisoned, you're shot in the street. If you're not shot, there's a drone in your sky in the Gaza Strip. If it's not a bomb, it's exile. But just as the Nakba continues, Palestinian resistance against it has not stopped a single day.